Released in 2017, the GTX 1080 Ti is adored by many enthusiasts as one of the best value high-end offerings with its excellent performance, generous 11 gigabyte memory buffer, and in hindsight, very reasonable price tag. At a $700 MSRP, the 1080 Ti was by no means a budget GPU, but starting with the very next generation release just a year and a half later, Nvidia's sub-Titan class cards quickly approached and have now far exceeded $1,000. Yes, the Titan cards have always been way expensive, but what we're highlighting is how quickly the regular RTX line has engulfed a price range normally occupied by the Titans. The RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition was a whopping $1,200, while the partner cards were $1,000. Since then, the introduction of 90 and 90 Ti class cards have meant that you can spend a cool two grand on a sub Titan class NVIDIA GPU if you've got the cheddar. Of course, adjusted for inflation, these numbers aren't as insane, but combined with the fact that each generation has seemingly relied more and more on DLSS to bring good performance gains, it's still not a great situation. So with graphics cards becoming more and more expensive, it's no wonder that so many have clung on to their 1080 Ti for so long. But that begs the question, how are these bad boys holding up as we approach the 1080 Ti's eighth birthday. Well, we're going to run this card through its paces in a slew of recent titles to see just how viable it is to still be rocking this old geezer in your PC. Our test system specced with a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of memory on Windows 11 24H2, in case you're curious. So we'll start with a few pre-2024 titles, then move into some more recently released ones. With most of these games, we've elected for full 1080p, no upscaling, though there are a few exceptions we'll note. And since we also tested the RTX 3070 and RX 6800 recently, we'll compare those cards in a few games as well. Starting with a game Game, the 1080 Ti crushes at, at 1080p, we're looking at Baldur's Gate 3. In a populated fighting scene, we were able to crack an 82 FPS average at the Ultra preset. With Hogwarts Legacy, we needed to drop the settings down a bit, but still achieved a respectable 70 FPS average while running around the open world. When we move up to 1440p high, we can compare to the new cards to find the 3070 is nearly 50% better and the RX 6800 is over 80% better. In Far Cry 6 built-in benchmark, we saw a similar result to Baldur's Gate, as we were able to push 72 FPS at 1080p Ultra on the 1080 Ti. The King of the 10 series also made light work with Spider-Man Miles Morales at 1080p as it soared to a 90 FPS average at the very high preset. In Dying Light 2, 1080p high settings saw the 1080 Ti pull a 69 FPS average at 1440p, the 3070 is 60% better and the 6800 is 90% better. As for more recent titles, we'll first look at God of War Ragnarok, where we saw a 71 FPS average at 1080p cranked to the Ultra preset. At 1440p Ultra, we again find the 3070 is around 50% better, but this time the RX 6800 performs in line with the 3070. In Horizon Forbidden West, at 1080p medium settings, the 1080 Ti captured a smooth 75 FPS average. For Sons of the Forest, the 1080 Ti was easily capable of 1440p Ultra, so that's what we went for with this game. The 1080 Ti is good for an 80 FPS average. One of the only games we tested to truly bring this old beast to its knees was Final Fantasy 16, where at 1080p with the mid preset, we couldn't quite get to 60 FPS, though we aren't too far off at 54 on average. In a very similar fashion, Black Myth Wukong also saw frame rates in the low 50s at 1080p medium while smacking up oversized mythical creatures. And lastly, we're looking at Call of Duty Black Ops 6, which for whatever reason, gave us the biggest headache out of any of the games we tested. It was like pulling teeth trying to get this game to run for more than a few minutes without crashing. We did manage to get it running long enough to capture a couple benchmark runs though, which saw us getting an average of 81 FPS at 1080p Ultra during a campaign mission. We definitely recommend you do your research if you're planning to buy this game, but we'd also imagine a patch will be pushed out soon if there is something going on there. All right, so the 1080 Ti is still holding 
pretty strong by our measure. The PlayStation ports can be a challenge, but outside of that, it's looking like 1080p high settings is easily doable. Gamers Nexus found that the 1080 Ti lands somewhere around in RX 6600 XT or RTX 3060 in performance, which should mean you can expect graphical fidelity not far from what the PS5 or Xbox Series X can put out. So while we tested mostly at 1080p, you could certainly drop the settings and move to a render resolution of between 1200 to 1400p, or even higher in some cases. That's the freedom of PC though. You could have totally had this level of performance before these consoles released and enjoyed your preferred balance of graphics and frame rate since then. So if you're still using a 1080 Ti and you're considering an upgrade, you do have several options. If you paid $700 in 2017 for one, you'd have a budget of over $900 today if we adjust for inflation. That means you could consider either the RTX 4070 Ti Super or the RX 7900 XTX. Both being great options that would provide three to four times the GPU power, a massive upgrade. If you're on more of a budget, then we'd recommend an RTX 4070 or an RX 7700 XT, which should get you about twice the power of just the 1080 Ti. And in case you want a full breakdown on what graphics card you should be considering at every budget, you can check out this video that we released last week right there, where we break it down via price points to give you the best recommendations that we know of. And if you're considering upgrading to a 1080 Ti, it looks like there's plenty of listings on eBay here in the US asking for between 150 and $200. And while that's not a bad choice, it also looks like you can get an RX 6700 XT for around $250, which would likely outperform the 1080 Ti by quite some margin. And if you're only considering Team Green, then a used RTX 3060 Ti would also be a better choice than a 10 series card in terms of support, features, NVENC encoding, DLSS support, ray tracing, all of that stuff. Not to mention that who knows how long NVIDIA is gonna continue driver support for this. We're still lucky that they're including GTX 970s on the drivers. Uh, the, the 1080 Ti at seven years old right now is pushing it. NVIDIA used to cut out support at seven years. So what do you guys think? Is the GTX 1080 Ti the best graphics card to ever release? There's certainly a strong argument to be made, no doubt. After nearly eight years, it still stands out. And so with the way things have been going, there may not be another contender for the title anytime soon. Some may say the 4090 marked a similar jump in value for the high end, but at over twice the price of the 1080 Ti, it's a tough pill to swallow. You have to keep in mind the 1080 Ti was only $100 more than the 1080, offered around 30 to 40% more performance, and it released less than a year after it. That was pretty incredible and unprecedented, and we haven't seen it again. The next best value card since the NVIDIA 10 series for us would be the Radeon RX 6000 series. Both the 6800 and 6800 XT came in under the price of the 3080 while offering performance very close to it, dwarfing the 3070 at a minimum. The 6700 XT also came in offering a much better value than virtually anything under $500. The RX 7000 series also slots in well, but doesn't offer that much that the 6000 series didn't. And the RTX 40 series was anything but impressive in the value department. Let's not forget the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti offer basically nothing over the predecessors, often performing nearly identical. Ouch. So with shortages and the pandemic in our rear view, let's hope the coming years can bring us hardware to truly be excited for. Another one of these, NVIDIA, AMD, please.